Thank you. Thank you, uh, Economic Times, to give me an opportunity to present at the seventh ET Summit on Life on Insurance. We meet at this time when there's a lot of talk of the new normal. This new normal now is no longer new. It's our current normal, and as I can see it, it will be pretty much our normal for the next foreseeable future, maybe nine months, uh, could be even 12 months till people will have masks on themselves. In this uh, COVID time, the life insurance industry has actually uh, been able to garner good numbers. It has been able to progressively get better and better month on month. No wonder, I think we are, a, we are an industry which is good at risk management. So to be able to see that when risk management products are required more, we should be able to take that benefit. I've been around in the sector now for quite some time and in the last two decades, I've seen one mini or major crisis or the other every three to five years. And I think in all these times, the sector has only emerged stronger, emerged better. What has been unique although about this one, this one is of course huge, but is the way we have positively gone and embraced technology. Not just us as a sector, but even customers. So you heard in the panel discussion and you even heard otherwise that uh, life insurance is all about face-to-face -face selling. This is something which we thought will never really go. And uh, last two decades, that's what, that's what we've all seen. But the shift to the consumption of technology, maybe because customers were used to seeing technology from e-commerce players, has been quite swift even in taking on life insurance. So as I said during my panel discussion, the customer's been two steps ahead of the sector when it comes to adopting technology. This technology transformation, which we were expecting will happen over maybe 10 years, suddenly all trends show that we've done it over 10 months, eight yet, two more to go. And hence, there's a lot of innovation that has to come for safe technologies to be consumed by the customer. So what used to happen in the past that the life sector would spend about 70% of its budgets in technology in the back end. This is now slowly shifting to front-end front end, uh, spending. And a lot of experimentation, a lot of innovation, a lot of safe technologies for customers, safe in terms of uh, your data, the safety of your data, and second is safety in terms of interaction today. Today, you and I can do this entire seminar at safe distance and the requirement is social distancing, right? So we can safely do it. We can discuss, we can talk to each other, we can reach out to a large public without much cost. The same thing has been possible with customers as well. And the way the customer has responded has been awesome. At Bajaj Alliance Life, we have been able to come up with very simple solutions on social distancing. So I can uh, usually sell life insurance only by use of paper, but now of course the private sector has been able to use a tab. What Balik has done is a step further. We've gone a step further because we saw that customers are uh, not going to be comfortable even meeting face to face with a tablet because they don't want to touch anything, right? So we've made our tablet into a into a screen to screen sharing. Just a small example of how uh, safe technologies can come. In. Similarly, we've seen a huge take up of bots consumption, chatbots, a huge consumption of WhatsApp based services, a lot of work on the customer portal that we are seeing uh, from the customer end and a lot of consumption of all these assets. Hence, I just see this getting better and better. This possibly we would have expected 10 years to go off before customers start consuming all these technologies and more. Today, whatever new we bring up, the customer is able to lap it up 
consume it and being able to move forward and waiting for the next innovation. A lot of stuff we've seen around natural language processing, which has been consumed very well by customers when it comes to WhatsApp services. That having said, the other big stakeholder that we particularly have to be worried about, and we've all, I think, as a sector, uh, responded very well, is the safety of our employees. It's been a unique situation where, while the customer, of course, wants to uh, not meet face to face, even employees don't want to go out. Hence, they don't even want to come to branches. We've seen ample and more cases multiply because of this in COVID. Hence, work from home as a very clear next step is something that is underway in the life sector. We as a company, for example, now have really embraced it again in a big way. I'm very clear that we will bring down our branch infrastructure cost by bringing down the sales asset space and maybe multiplying the space for the customer, whoever wants to come in, but surely not have sales teams come in every day, every morning, every evening. You don't need to come. You just need to be working from home. You, you call by a customer. The customer wants to meet face to face, even in the future. You actually just go and meet the customer uh, only. You don't need to come to the branch. Similarly, we're seeing with the work from home getting extended, new spaces of opportunity. There are distribution possibilities around work from home channels. When you start thinking work from home, you start thinking of uh, a second innings player, a second innings player meaning uh, maybe a woman who was, uh, who was born a child and is, uh, was used to, used to work earlier and is unable to work today uh, despite all the education and expertise uh, and has to therefore uh, work from home or, or maybe not be able to work in case it is work from office. Now, this huge segment is, is available now as another talent uh, pool availability for the entire life insurance sector. I see this becoming uh, a big opportunity when it comes to our developing advisor base, developing special skills, uh, getting onto the gig economy, people working for four hours or six hours in a day from their place. No need to come to the office. Maybe come once in a week, comes in once in a month, report, go back. I see this being a huge transformational possibility in the life sector, and I can see it happening right now. This is as is where is what we see right now. Lots of questions are being asked and lots of us are worried about what is in store for us in the future. And it's very difficult to predict the future. Nobody can. But there are a few trends which are clear. It's very clear that there will be a form of digital in every sale that is going to happen here on. There is going to be a significant form, much more than maybe in selling, in servicing of customers. We saw uh, an 85% uh, of our premiums, renewal premiums coming in through digital in the last six months. I see no reason why this should be in that ballpark. It may come down maybe a year later when people are willing to come to branches a lot more. Um, and branch walk-ins have come down. We are at one fifth of what we were usually doing in terms of uh, you know, the number of people coming in branches. But the digital uptake is, is, is there to stay. Now, whether it will be uh, uh, you know, totally digital, the spectrum is gonna be quite wide. There's gonna be a segment of customers who would want to be totally digital and work from uh, the console and maybe work everything out of, a, uh, out of uh, a laptop or a handheld. At the same time, there will be the other extreme where there will be advisors who still would want to do some face-to-face -face selling maybe a year later when the masks are out, but they too will have to acclimatize themselves with ample and more digital because their customer has already moved on. 
In fact, we moved on to digital. With this wide spectrum, uh, maybe the life sector was mostly towards the left, where there's a lot of face-to-face. -face. All this is now going to move a little bit towards the center and, cent and right of center. And you should expect uh, more and more business models to come around the digital space, uh, whether it's pre-sales, whether it's onboarding, for sure there'll be changes. Uh, but overall, you'll see the, the entire customer interaction significantly move uh, towards digital. FinTech and InsurTech will play and continue to play a significant uh, role. There was a time when we would interact only with the large names. We, we never felt safe talking to, uh, to smaller promoters. Every innovation I can now see is actually coming from the small uh, companies, the startups, who are willing to invest, high quality people, smaller teams, more agile, and, and really work fast. Companies themselves are learning to control costs and put projects now in very simple two buckets, the must-haves and the good-to-haves. And the must-haves is where a lot of innovation is going to be coming. And that is what is going to make an impact on customers. That's where FinTech will play a significant role. And it's not just about KYC. It's not just about uh, digital payments. It's about new and new innovations, which could be a small part of the entire buying process or selling process. But each of these small things when added up will start giving a buy journey, which will be a lot more smoother. The other bit we should expect is easing of processes. Very clearly, uh, we don't sell enough of life insurance as we should maybe, only because our products are difficult. So there's more and more we need to do around this. And in this, there will be a lot of work that will be done with the regulator. On the side of the regulator, I've been seeing a lot of agility that is uh, that, that IRD has kind of pushed us to showcase and IRD itself has been quite agile. I just hope for whatever we've gained in terms of uh, the digital process remains in the future as well. If that remains, I think we're building on a very strong regulatory foundation. There. When it comes to products, uh, we've already seen the product basket which was very narrow around savings. There were basically two kinds of products maybe five years back. We also used to see usually ULIP, par and non-par. Now it is already wider. We're already seeing various versions of term plans coming in. I would stick my neck out and say that about 10 to 20% of NOPs, closer to 20% of the NOPs of the sector number of custom, customers on modded, number of products sold will be pure term. Will the saving products still be in vogue? Of course they will be. There will still be the lion's share because all said and done, India's average age is around 29 and people do want money back. And uh, they want money back to consume, consume for their own life goals. And we will see a more and more need for satisfying these life goals through savings, but of a larger pie which will be a wider pie. The third product segment, which I see coming is around pensions. Uh, lots of people hit the age of 60 every day in India. And the last I heard the number was 30,000 people a day. Now this segment is, is, is going to be needed uh, to serve and pension products therefore will get more and more important as we go. Another trend is going to be around analytics. Uh, lots more, lot more uptake, lot more data available, a lot more data available with safe footprint on websites, on apps, uh, shall be consumed. And most companies will use this to be able to profile and pinpoint uh, opportunities for customers. Of course, the winners will be the ones who will be able to execute it very well intuitively and uh, be able to. Uh, really do the entire nine yards in this and not have make-believe small parts of the processes in that. 
And the last is, of course, distribution. Uh, I do expect digital to get bigger. I do expect new versions of the same coming in. So work from home advisors, work from home telecallers, work from home lead generators. Uh, I expect the POS channel to do a lot better. Uh, I think the GI industry has done far better than the LI industry, and I see that getting better and better. I see uh, coming our wealth managers more and more into this segment uh, as, as time goes by. So overall, I can see a pretty bright future for the sector, and uh, the winners will be the ones who will execute all these strategies together well. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that you've had a great time during the summit and, uh, and we've been able to add some value to you. Thank you so much.